Welcome back here to News Now from Fox. We're going to continue giving you more news happening here across our country. In U.S. Supreme Court, it was a big victory for Alphabet's Google as they did decide its use of Oracle software code to rebuild Android operating system did not actually violate the federal copyright law. So we do have an uh, expert who joined us uh, earlier this morning and gave us a little insight to what this ruling actually means. A big ruling here today by U.S. Supreme Court, and we're going to break it all down for you. I'm joined uh, today with Ahmad Banafa. Now, he is the SJSU cybersecurity expert who is going to help us get into this ruling. So, first of all, let's just talk about uh, this lawsuit. It's been going on since 2010. That is true. I mean, it's, uh, it's an old one. It's been through three trials, two appeals. And today, the whole thing ended end up in something good for for the uh, tech industry, which means Google is not gonna you know uh, pay Oracle, and the ruling itself is really very good news for so many people in the in the software industry. And so let's just kind of talk about that first. You know, what does this really mean for the software industry to not have this copyright law enforced here today? Well, the, the whole case itself about. Uh, about Google using 11,330 lines of code from uh, Oracle's, uh, you know, own program. You have to keep in mind that when Google created uh, Android as an operating system for the smartphones, they wrote 12 million lines of codes. That's that's at, at the at the at the lower level. It can go up to 15 million when it comes to the new versions. So they took that 11,330 lines and added it to the code because this is the only way for them so they can communicate with the different apps that added into the phone. And that is the whole idea of the copyright, you know, uh, problem. And so let's just kind of talk about that, you know, for the average consumer, you know, how would this have affected them based on this ruling, how, how it could have gone? Well, uh, it, first, it's good news for, for multiple levels, for the academics, for the industry, and most importantly, for the consumers. Because instead of reinventing the wheel every time somebody want to write uh, an app about delivering food, uh, instead of, you know, uh, having their own map or they having their own, you know, email, they can just connect this one to the existing, uh, you know, applications and make it really take advantage of what we have, uh, you know, done before. So it is, it is a good push for you so you can open the door for apps and for program to be invented quickly. If we have this, uh, you know, this rolling, you know, on the other side, there are going to be a lot of problems. It's going to, it's going to stop the wheel of invention and we're not going to see that many programs as we've seen them in the, in the past. So let's just kind of then dive into what this really means as far as the innovation future goes, because I'm sure a lot of people were wondering, you know, if this really was ruled the other way, you know, and you couldn't copyright, that'd be a lot of work that they'd have to go into to making those codes once again. That, that's that's a that's a very good you know uh, way of putting the the whole uh, picture here. Uh, there are two options. Even even Judge uh, Breyer, when uh, when he was uh, you know uh, talking about the case, he he mentioned something which is extremely extremely you know you know brilliant. You know, if he said that a word with Oracle was allowed to enforce the copyright, and this is his own quote, would risk harm to the public and make Oracle as the gatekeeper. For the code, so this is just an example about how significant is this kind of applications. For me, when I work with the students on their senior project or research or a capstone project, we talk about this concept of API, which is basically application programming interface. It's it's your way to communicate with other programs. With this rolling, I can communicate with other programs and take some of their code so we can communicate with each other. If not, then I have to create programs for my programs, and that's going to be that's going to be really a tremendous hardship. Today, as we speak, there is 2.4 million apps available for Android. We're not going to have this if this rolling uh, went the other way. Yeah, and so uh, let's just kind of look into the future. You know, where is this kind of industry going? Where is the software industry going? Uh, this is going to open the door, you know, you know, for for uh, uh, so many of the developers not to look over their shoulders, uh, so many of the companies not to worry about somebody going to come and sue them if they take few parts of the codes that will help them connect and have a cross platform. So many people at different, you know, uh, uh, you know, different platforms or different devices can use it. That is that's a key thing. 
you know, there are 2.5 billion devices using Android, uh, uh, you know, software, 2.5 billion devices, and, and they're active. And, this, and Android is not just for the smartphone, it's actually for cars. It's actually for, you know, you know we're talking about uh, smoke detectors, cameras, it's even on the International Space Station. They are using, you know, uh, some of the devices, the robots, they control it by the, by, by the smartphone that runs uh, on uh, Android. So we are talking about, you know, uh, an earthquake, uh, you know, a tsunami, if this case is not, uh, you know, the result is not the same as what we heard about it this morning. No, just because this has been going on since 2010, let's just kind of talk about that, though, because it has gone kind of one way before. Now it's kind of been reversed by the U.S. Supreme Court. So that in itself, too, seems like uh, it could possibly in the future be more court cases once again with other companies, possibly. That is true. I mean, uh, they... They looked at the this case specifically about Oracle and Google. They did not, you know, close all the door. There could be cases in the future, but this case is laying the foundation of how people are going to think about using some parts of the of the code so they can make their code, you know, more reachable by other devices, by other operating system, by other programs. Uh, I mean, it's 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 not the end for you know for uh, cases against the copyright. Copyright is is guaranteed. There's no question about it. They use the very very you know narrow definition of fair use of the and and that's an old law. It's 1976. The fair use of the certain you know uh, intellectual properties. Yeah, and let's just again kind of talk about now for you what this decision really kind of means as far as what you do at San Jose. It's it's really a good news. It's a good relief. You know, when I woke up this morning at uh, you know six, uh, and I uh, saw the flash, you know, uh, news about uh, uh, Google, you know, you know, uh, uh, prevailed and and won the case. I actually read most of the sixty-two pages of the Supreme Court ruling, and it it is brilliant. You know, they understand the impact on the society, on the consumers, and in the industry. They understand that. For me, as somebody who is working with the students in senior project and on their capstone project, we don't have to worry, you know, about you know uh, connecting with 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 other software, getting some of the the pieces of the software so we can we can create something better. And this is this is mentioned in the in the ruling that we are using small parts of the uh, of the program of Oracle to create something better, to advance to something which is going to be more helpful. Yeah, hopefully this kind of helping pave a path towards even more innovation, more uh, ways that we can continue to improve coding in the future. So I just want to say, Ahmad, thanks again for joining us here, helping kind of break down what exactly was ruled here today in the U.S. Supreme Court. Thank you.